All right, so we're starting with an introduction to logarithms now. And before we really get into this, we need to explain uh, or think about what the purpose of a logarithm is. And to do that, I'll just draw an exponential graph. Okay, we went over these a bit in the last section. And you can see here this function, I'm just going to call this 2 to the x, right? Uh, it crosses the y-axis at a certain place, and it has a bunch of other values going up this line that we could figure out. But if you want to actually calculate an equation, and we'll get into equations later, but if you have an exponential equation like 2 to the x equals 4, sometimes you can guess it. It's not that hard. In this case, um, x would be 2, right? Because 2 to the second power is 4. But sometimes it's going to be a more difficult equation like 2 to the x equals 5. And you can guess all you like. You're not going to come up with something for x that works like this. For this, you have to use calculators. And that's fine, but just like when we were solving trigonometric equations in a previous unit, it's a little difficult to be able to type things like this into a calculator and have the calculator figure it out. So we're going to use a similar technique to those uh, trig function equations. We need an inverse of exponentials. Just like when you have an equation like uh, sine of theta equals, uh, I don't know, pi, we would say theta equals the inverse sine of pi, if you remember that. We need something that does an inverse function of exponentials. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about that. The question is, what is the inverse of an exponential? And there's an invented function for this and we call this a logarithm. Logarithm, okay, kind of a funny word. So logarithms are inverse exponentials. And if you imagine what this graph would look like, it's, it's got a shape that you might not be too surprised about if you think about it. Remember what inverse functions look like? They are symmetric about this line y equals x. And if you look at this inverse right here, this log, and we would call this um, the log of 2 base 2x. Log base 2x that I wrote right here is the inverse of 2 to the x power. And we'll get into all, all these um, terms and how we use them, but I want to just get across this idea of inverse functions that we're doing right now. So if I said, what's the domain and range of a logarithm? Um, we could think about this using uh, exponentials first. So, for example, what's the domain of 2 to the x? Well, x can be anything. It can go all the way down to negative infinity way over here or positive infinity way up there. So it's going to be negative infinity to positive infinity, right? There are no domain restrictions for this one. And what's the range of an exponential? Like 2 to the x. Well, you can see it's never going to go less than uh, 0, right? 2 to the negative 100 is still more than 0. So it's going to be at least 0, but bigger than 0. And it's going to go all the way up to infinity. Okay, so that's the domain and range of a logarithm, of a exponential. And when I said that logarithms and exponentials are inverse functions, we can use that. If you remember how inverse functions work when you have domain and range, that means the domain of this logarithm which we just learned about, and the range of this logarithm can be determined from the exponent function because they're inverses. The domain of the exponent is equal to the range of the logarithm, and the range of the, log of the exponent is equal to the domain of the logarithm. So in other words, the domain of the logarithm is 0 to infinity, and the range of the logarithm is negative infinity to infinity. And you can see that looking at this graph right here, that logarithm. So that's domain and range. And let's talk a little bit more about what this whole log 2x thing means. Um, and we'll get into the definition of a logarithm for that. So what the definition of logarithm is, is it relies on the definition of an exponent. And if you recall from a previous lesson, we talked about a equals b to the c. This is an exponential equation. It's a very simple one. And this 
can be turned directly into a logarithmic function. And the way that looks is log b of a equals c. And I'm using the letters a, b, and c purposefully. We defined these previously when we were doing exponents. And here are the definitions again, if, if you forgot. a is called the argument. b is called the base. And c is called the exponent. And those definitions for a, b, and c are the same for an exponential as they are for a logarithm. So we would call this right here, this a, that's the argument. This c over here is the exponent, and this b right here is the base. So that's why when I say, uh, let's use an example here, log with a little 2 over here, and then x, what I mean is, uh, I mean this, log base 2 of x. Okay, That's the way I would say that. So let's try and use this definition of a logarithm to sort of dip our toes into what logarithms do. We're going to rewrite an exponential equation as a logarithm. And let's do this example right here. Um, here's what I want to do. Rewrite. And for this one, I'm just going to keep it simple. We're going to say 9 to the third power equals 729. Right? If you cube 9, you'll get 729. And I want to rewrite that as a logarithm. We will get more sophisticated with these rewriting as logarithm type examples later on. But for now, let's just take a look at this. And as you're starting this out, what I want you to do is think about what's the argument, what's the base, what's the exponent. So in this example above, a, and it's OK to go back uh, to these definitions here as you need them. Let's just copy those, bring them down here so we can look at it. If you think about this, whoa, that's, go away. Okay, if you think about what this is, a is the argument. Well, where is this in the equation? a equals b to the c. It looks like this is a over here. Okay, right there, that's a. So I'm going to say a equals 729. b, that's the base. Uh, where's base in here? That's the number that's being raised to an exponent. That is 9 right here. So b equals 9, and c is the exponent itself. In this case, that's 3. And now use these things right here to rewrite the function as a logarithm. So we would just say log, and what goes next? That's the b. Uh, so it's going to be base 9. And the argument is 729, and the exponent is 3. Okay, so this is how you would rewrite the exponential function or exponential equation 9 cubed equals 729 as a logarithm.